You can use it or not. I just think that if this is really beautiful, what you're vlogging, and I think you could use it in a recording if you wanted, if you're trying to make an album. I didn't want to make you self-conscious. No, you didn't. I just lost my train of thought. You talk about your eight-year-old. <laughs> I mean, I was wrapping up, to be honest. I'm a bird that wants to be a plane. I know that sounds insane, but every living thing deserves to dream. I watch them take off from the island on the side of the runway lane and curse my feathered wings. I'm jealous of these giant metal kings, how their engine sings, floating off the ground, leaving smoke clouds and perfect iridescent streams. I've tried to follow them, hoping that they would take the lead. But they don't notice me, and I can't keep up with their speed. I always wind up somewhere in between. And as their trail disappears into thin air, it's hard to breathe. I really wish they'd let me join their team. My breaking heart is on my sleeve. So I open up my beak to speak, but they're too far to hear my screams. To them, I'm bird feed, cause they don't understand what I aspire to achieve. I have higher needs indeed, beyond the pretty ponds and the subtlety of swaying reeds. I want to kiss the moon, cutting rain clouds over endless seas, bend the breeze, let it freeze. Elements are of no consequence when you're forever free. But instead, I'm me. I'm a bird that wants to be a plane. But what's more absurd, I heard that somewhere there's a plane that wants to be a bird. One of my favorite sayings is, I don't know who discovered water, but it probably wasn't a fish. And I fucking love that saying. Because to me, it means you can't see your own environment when you're inside of it. And it's only when you get outside of it that you even know that it exists. They say a goldfish will only get as big as its bowl. But if you put it in a tank, the space can change the way it grows. It needs to have the room or its potential doesn't show. So its environment's essential for unleashing the unknown. I ponder if it knows that it could grow beyond the bowl. That it could have a pond the size of an Olympic swimming pool that the world is so much larger than the boundaries that it's known. Somehow, I empathize with this little golden soul. Because I too have unexplored and unexpressed goals that were suppressed by an environment I couldn't control. Am I still playing small because it's all that I've known? When there's a giant in my bones that I'm not sure I've ever shown? I ask myself this question when I'm purposely alone. When my body grows to take up all the rooms inside my home, I expand in all directions, every single inch consumed. I'm a billion feet tall now, my head over the moon. I look down on the earth as it slowly spins around. I look down on the countries and the cities and the towns. I look down on the square blocks and buildings all around. I look down on my street and rip the roof right off my house. I look down on myself sitting writing on my couch. Look, I barely pay attention. I'm the one that's looking down. How unaware I am of where I am, it's profound. So I put the roof back on and shrink myself back to the ground. It's crazy how I fit infinity inside my doubts. 
How I stuff the universe into the tiniest amounts. How I keep the solar system in the corners of my mouth. How I speak into existence, then forget what I'm about. And most days, I'm not sure which side of the glass I've been on. I win a Grammy in the shower every time I sing a song. But when the spotlight is on, my first instinct's to run. I have to super glue my feet to even tell you where I'm from. I've been training for a quarantine since I was very young. For an introvert, it slightly hurts to tell you that they'll come. I would rather get into a staring contest with the sun, although I'll never get to see who won. <laughs> it's nature and it's nurture, twisting into jungle life, fighting the competition, branching out to reach the light. I tried to listen but could only hear my ancient heart. It screamed at me to make my life into my greatest art. But where to start? These walls are keeping people out and keeping people in. I guess it's good to know where someone ends and someone else begins. But our boundaries become prisons when we see what could have been. The biggest goldfish ever measured 18 inches snout to fin. Fin. You used to think that if you or part of like feeling like there was no protection was because there was no man like you didn't have a dad well yeah and so i tried to be that but nobody taught me how to be that so i was just making it up as i went along and i tried to you know always save my mom from herself but that was like the game and that was a never-ending game where nobody wins If I told you that I loved you, would you believe me? Would you receive me? Would you even see me? Or would you see yourself? Are you scared that you would need me like you needed someone else? It's so easy to deceive me if you first deceive yourself. So you leave, but you don't leave me. Once again, you leave yourself. I could let your ego feed me, but I've learned it doesn't help. I could yell at you to hear me, but you won't and I can tell. I wish you could feel my love so maybe I could feel it too. I wish that you could truly see me, but I see you seeing you. It's like no matter what I do, there is nothing I can do. There is no one I can be to prove my endless love to you. And since I cannot love you for you, we should just take in the view because my breaking heart adores you even though you never knew. See, I would give my death for you but refuse to give my life. I would take a bullet for you but won't wrestle with your knife. I would give you my last dollar but won't pay a higher price. I'm not walking with a collar, I'm not rolling loaded dice. You can use me as a weapon but I won't be an excuse. I'd risk my neck for you, but won't help you tie your noose. So I tell you that I love you even though I have no proof. Even though you don't believe me. Even though I can't get through. It kind of hurts to love you, Mom. Still, it's something that I do. Because my breaking heart adores you, even though you never knew. Earlier you were saying that, like, you didn't have anyone show you who you were, but don't you feel like there's a kernel of like your true essence that you remember before you were conditioned? Yeah, I mean, the other age, other than like eight and then, you know, 15 is like three. And every time I imagine my three year old, he's fearless. 
<laughs> and he's really curious and he just explores and plays constantly. I can't even really like catch his attention because when I'm around him, he's just running around like a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he's smiling all the time. He jumps on me and uses me like a jungle gym and then runs away. Um, he's just this little ball of joy. And then at a certain point, he came into consciousness and he was programmed. And then all of a sudden he was just like a zombie sitting in front of the television all the time. Sometimes I miss my sadness. I get so sad without it. It was with me all these years, it never gave me cause to doubt it. But as my joys increased, my heart was suddenly too crowded. And it pushed my sadness out, and now I'm sad to be without it. It was my best friend, with me everywhere I went, ride or die until the end. I got so used to sadness that my sadness used to like to play pretend Cause it didn't trust strangers So it hid behind my happiness and hid behind my anger But really it was sadness I couldn't let it out, I couldn't get it out, I couldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't What if someone saw they'd know what I'm about Then they'd view me as weak And they'd take advantage of the secret I couldn't keep so I kept it to myself, and I built a wall around my heart. My tears became a crocodile moat. You'd have to swim across and not get torn apart. But even if you reached the other side, that was just the start. I'd have archers posted way up high. You can't get to my sadness. How dare you even fucking try? I'll kill you before showing you the sadness that I have inside. After all, it's mine. I worked hard for this. Plus, it's the primary fuel my ego harnesses. What if I give it up and nothing takes its place? What would I do with all that space? It'd be a waste. I'd rather stick with sadness. That's what I told myself. I'm comfortable with sadness. At least I know him well. He wants to kill me in my sleep. When he smiles, I can tell. He's terrified I'm gonna leave him in a self-imposed hell. I feel guilty when I'm happy. Of course I know it's wrong. But somehow suffering is easier than braving the unknown. Connection can be scary. I don't want to lose control. Cause nothing else can hurt me while I'm hiding in this hole. But nothing else can love me while I'm hiding in this hole If I don't try inside this hole, I'm gonna die inside this hole So I leveraged my depression and made climbing out my goal Happiness was my obsession, but my heart had grown so cold I had to tear myself apart to keep the parts that made me whole Now my life is like a lucid dream, I'll wake up when I'm old Because everything is perfect even when I notice flaws All the suffering was worth it What it is is what it was But sometimes I miss my sadness We had some awesome times I hear he's talking shit about me through a twisted grapevine It's kinda empty here without him It used to be so packed Maybe I should fuck my life up So I can get him back But I had so much shit happen to me. I mean, I was thinking about when that guy hit me the other day because I had just sent the letter to my dad that he didn't respond to. 
And I was so upset because in my mind, I was so dissatisfied. And I think I thought that if I could make contact with my dad, everything would get better. And so when I sent him that letter finally for Father's Day and he didn't respond, I was just heartbroken. And that was the summer that we went away to this fucking camp that that, you know, 45 year old man hit me at. And I was thinking about that situation the other day because I didn't trust anybody. Nobody. Yeah. At least not an adult. And I didn't have any other mentors or people that I looked up to as adults that I felt I was open enough to confide in. And so here I was at this camp and this guy thought I was messing with his son, which I kind of was, but we were also playing. And he just hauled off and hit me and he hit me so hard. And yeah, man, I just, once again, it was like, I just felt like the world was out to get me. Cause I didn't ever look at men and feel comfortable as a boy. I always looked at them like they were an alien or <laughs> some foreign thing that was like so far away from me. Um, and then when we got robbed, that was really fucked up. Like it was super violent. Like we came home and it wasn't like they had stolen a bunch of shit. They destroyed the house. They cut all of her clothes. They st stole Nintendo, my Nintendo, my baseball cards. But then they fucking overturned everything else. They dumped all of this water, like gallons of water on our couch. They graffitied the walls. The television was broken. And it was like another situation where I was like 11 and I was like, oh, okay, like there's no protection here. You're more likely to be killed while driving to the beach than by a shark. In fact, you're 30 times more likely to be killed by coconuts or falling airplane parts, and Google says that's just the start. Beware of bear attacks, fireworks, train tracks, bees eating, drinking, sleeping, sex, ladders, subways, dog steps. All of these can cause your death. I'm surprised there's people left. Biking, boating, cancer, smoke, lightning striking, hunting, stroke. Hippos are no fucking joke and chicken wings can make you choke or slipping on a bar of soap. Anything can make you croak. Lawn mowers, trees, guns, snow, wind, rain, sun. Many drown or die of thirst. Selfies are the fucking worst. Falling backwards off a cliff for likes that you will never get Fire, ice, poison, snakes, rivers, valleys, deserts, lakes, knives, ties, all types of sports They've weaponized our fucking forks Cows, wheat, sugar, pork, obesity of every sort Which brings me back to shark attacks Statistically, they come up short You're much more likely to be killed by popping out a champagne cork that shouldn't stop our celebration. Put your glasses in the air. How about we toast to life and overcoming irrational fears? Now that's a cheers. I'm not pretending that there aren't threats, but we can't live our lives if we're this preoccupied with death. You cannot hide somewhere where time doesn't find you. Anywhere you go, it will be one step behind you to remind you. The you you are will not be here forever. We're just spinning on a rock inside the universe together. It's a treasure. So let's measure life by more than just our years. It's the memories we make, especially when we are scared. 
It's the boundaries that we break and the risks we choose to take. It's the grace in our mistakes when we're humbled by a wave, when it tumbles us and pulls us under to an early grave. But we fight to reach the light just to live another day. And our fingers touch the surface and our lungs can breathe again. And we look off in the distance and we think we see a fin. We should probably get moving, make our way to solid land. We should get out of the water, but not never swim again. But the point is, is that all of those different times in my life that were frozen inside of me, they still exist and uh, they want to be acknowledged too. <laughs> so when something then happens externally that triggers them and gives them an excuse to take over, um, then I go away. For a while. I do that with you. I do that occasionally with other people, but mostly I just do it within myself. And so lately, instead of not paying attention to those parts of me, I've just been actively communicating with them all day long at nauseum. Because when I, you know, did that medicine journey that was where I saw my inner children, not inner child, but <laughs> inner children. Um, they were like in a jail cell in the middle of my chest. So when I talk to them, somehow I can relax a little bit in that area. Um, and it allows me to be a little bit more in the world. Happiness is not a point, it's a range. It's not a goal that you reach because it's constantly in phase. But if you stay inside the margins and you consciously engage, your happiness can find a balance on the razor's edge of change. The main problem is society has taught us that our happiness is something we can gain, something we can claim, something we attach to our name so we distract from our shame and search for happiness outside ourselves, perpetuating pain. But happiness is not a place. It's not a destination on the map. There's nothing that's outside of you that's gonna show you where you're at. Awareness is a conscious act. My happiness is not an accident. I practiced it. I practiced it and practiced it. I tried to master it, but life's too multifaceted. Besides, we'd all get bored without resorting to change. What's my point? Happiness is not a point. It's a range. If you don't know what your purpose is, tell me what your passion is. Don't know what your passion is? It's where inspired action is. It's what enthusiasm gives, a manual for how to live. So if you still can't fathom it, simplify the catalyst. Tell me what your interests are. Help explore what you're about. Don't know what your interests are? What are you curious about? 
Tell me what annoys you. Tell me what you love to hate. Now tell me what destroys you and use your voice to go create. Play in what employs you or find a hobby on the side. Nothing that you want to try. Imagine you're about to die. That would probably force you. If someone tried to take your life and they were coming towards you, would you fight to stay alive? I remember nights when I would contemplate my suicide. I'd lie awake debating non-existence till the sun's rise. I was feeling forced too. I had shit to alchemize. Of course it had to course through. Now my dreams are actualized. God does not ignore you. Get over being victimized. What does time afford you? A paycheck is a compromise. Tell me what implores you. Are you down to sacrifice? Now tell me what rewards you. I'll point you towards the afterlife. There is nothing in life that you cannot breathe through except death. And since we're all alive, it means at least there's one breath left. So pull it deep into your chest, into your bones, into your breasts, into your blood, into your necks, into the mud, into the depths, until it hugs your souls and suffocates the space that you have left until it tugs your heartstrings and leaves your molecules caressed. Just a few precious seconds right before eternal rest. Will you fight for your survival from this uninvited guest? Will you Rolodex your history to glamorize regrets or set your sights on new arrival and go sprinting up the steps? Me, I'll revel in the wonders of the colors and the shapes. The way the light resembles floating diamonds dancing on the lakes. I am nobody's mistake. But my existence wasn't planned. I had to sneak into the party. They were out of wristbands. Now I'm sinking towards the exit like it's made of quicksand. See, I got used to spinning my wheels but hit the kickstand. I want to truly view the world around me while I still can. I want to worship every flower giving prayers over the land. I want to open up my eyes so wide that what I see expands. And the beauty beams so bright it overwhelms woman and man. Forget a portal to the light. I want to scream. I want to fight. I want to eat and fucking drink. I want to touch. I want to think. I want to feel and taste and see. I want to live. I want to be. And I'd give anything but life because I'm dying to be me. I spent half my life trying to be anything but me. Now my afterlife is spying on my new reality. And I'm vying for another breath before it sets me free. I'm defying death with everything cause death's defying me. I will rant, I will rave, I will spit, I will rage. I'll go barefoot on the sun or swim a sea of razor blades. I will grow, I will age, I will slow, I will fade. I'll sleep on hot coals or juggle chainsaws and live grenades. And though I know I'll never give up, and I'll give way. I'm sure there's someone else with something more important to say. But until then, I'm living each and every fucking day. So when I take a breath, I do it like I swear I'm here to stay. And for you, when you look at like not being able to celebrate certain things or focusing on the negative, you know, it's just what we're used to. And that's what's comfortable. Yeah. And so that's what we go back to and we dance even if we don't like the music. Yeah, I was very comfortable being disappointed. 
that was your natural state. In fact, how are you supposed to know that that's not love? I mean, I guess that's what I thought it was for a long time. And I was always trying to change it, but obviously not choosing the right people <laughs> until I found you. But not that I'm trying to change you. Well, um, you have changed me, even if you haven't tried. Yeah, but I had to be willing to be with someone different than what I was normally attracted to. I was like attracted to chaos, yeah. And being disappointed and being let down. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint. You don't disappoint me. <laughs> <laughs> On the contrary. You don't disappoint me at all. Every love poem I ever wrote was about you. You are every dream I've ever had, and now they've come true. You are every dream I've never had. Somehow they've come true. I gaze into your eyes and know there'll never be a better view. I see heaven in your face. I see children in your smile. I see our future and our present. Will you stay with me a while? Will you dance without the music? Will you laugh without the jokes? Will you cry without a reason? Will you play with all the notes? I've come to love you in a way that is impossible to quote. Forever in a day is not enough, forever is a joke. Any moment we're together is forever, now or never, whether you are in my arms or too far away to measure. I respect you in the pain. I accept you in the pleasure. I'll be your shelter in the rain. You can shine in any weather. Every love poem I wrote was an invisible letter, reaching out beyond my time and space to what I would discover. From a place that was unknown to a home inside each other, I am floating on a cloud. I am singing in a gutter. Our relationship is sailing and we do not need a rudder. I don't care where we go from here, cause here is with each other. Your soul is like a mirror. You're a goddess and a lover. You're a sister and a brother. You're a father and a mother. You're a son and you're a daughter. You're a stranger and a friend. Even when I end, our love's not something I can transcend. You're more than just the perfect ten. Your beauty lies behind your skin. It's the way you taste reminding me of everyone I've been. It's the way you smell reminding me of everywhere I've been. Your sweetness overwhelms me, can we end where we begin? I'll only come back to write our stories intertwined again. You're the greatest poem I ever read, you made me find my pen. You're the greatest poem I ever wrote, the wisdom from within you inspire me. It took me lifetimes to comprehend. You're my who, what, where, and when. You're my why I even try. I vow to have you and to hold you till the day I say goodbye. I vow for better or for worse as long as you are by my side. I vow to cherish you in sickness and in health until I die. On our first date, you asked me why I hadn't settled down. I refused to give an answer, but I have your answer now. I was always waiting for you. You're the reason that you asked. My words have never done you justice, but I search for them at last. I've asked myself a thousand questions about who I want to be. I've asked myself a thousand questions to reflect on you and me. I've asked myself a thousand questions, but your loves would set them free. There's only one question left, so I'll ask it on one knee. My love, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I promise I'll do right by you, morning, noon, and night by you. I promise I'll be nice to you even when I fight with you. 
I promise I will fight for you. I'd even give my life for you. I promise I will write for you. My art is now my life for you. My heart is yours. So on your darkest day, I'll be the light for you. And when you're out past midnight, I promise I'll leave a light for you to guide you home into my open arms if that's all right with you. They say that love is blind, but you're the one that made me see. I've asked myself a thousand questions to reflect on you and me. I've asked myself a thousand questions, but your loves would set them free. There's only one question left. Will you marry me? Love is not soft, love is hard. Love is not smooth, love is scarred. Love is not perfect, love is flawed. Love is not quiet, love is loud. Love is not jealous, love is proud. Love is not certain, love is doubt. But love is not leaving, love's turning around. Love's learning to fight for the middle ground. Love is not gentle, love is tough. Love is not fragile, love is rough. Love is not thinking that love is enough. So I choose to love you harder from the moment I wake up. Love is a revolutionary act. Love is an attack. Love is not abstract, love is a fact. Love is not passive, love is passion. Love is not a feeling, love is an action. Love is saying yes when you want to say no. Love is saying stay when you want to say go. Love is staying high even when you get low. Love is going with the flow, holding on and letting go. Cause love is not easy, love is complex. Love is not right or wrong, love is context. Love is not black or white, love is progress. Love is not a product, love is a process. So in the simple moments, when the chaos fades away, in the silence of the evening, or the empty of your day, You'll remember what it feels like to give your heart away and think how lucky you have been to get to love someone this way and how lucky you still are to get to love someone this way. It's a miracle to be alive. That's why I have to say love is not a guarantee. It will come and it will leave. It relies on your belief, so it will bring you to your knees. Love is weak, love is lost, love is grief, love is loss. Love is risk, love is real, but love is worth the pain we feel. And I won't let the fear of losing you limit how I'm loving you. I'm gonna love you harder, it's a privilege to be hugging you. I'm gonna love you harder more than ever before. I'm at peace with knowing love is war. That's what we're fighting for. So love harder. First yourself, then your family. Your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors and your community. Then try to love a stranger. Try to tap into your empathy. Imagine that you've known them and protected them since infancy. Now try to love the people that you don't love at all. Even people that you hate, they probably need it most of all. And if you can't love them big, see if you can love them small. See if you can hold compassion for the asshole that they are. Because love is not soft, love is hard. Love is scarred, love is flawed, love is loud, love is proud, love is doubt. And since love is most important when we do not know how, I will choose to love you harder in the never ending.
now. You want to go in and take a CBD bubble bath? Yeah. Let's go. Will you carry the chicken? Yeah.